Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Jeanette. Um, uh, my name is Sachiko. Uh, I'm uh, I'm a chef and uh, cookery teacher in the UK. Um, I've been working some uh, Japanese restaurants in London, uh, Japanese fishmonger, uh, British vegetarian restaurants in, in Birmingham, in UK, and um, also I work uh, many uh, food. Uh, food school in, in the UK uh, for the last 20 years. Um, in, in Japan, my parents had a small uh, family-run restaurant um, uh, that was uh, near Himeji in Hyogo. And I grew up uh, literally the upstairs of that restaurant. So me and my family were always uh, surrounded by the food. <laughs> And the, today, uh, I'd like to introduce you some uh, very traditional pickles uh, called nukazuke. Um, nukazuke. Um, yeah, I will go through the detail. Uh, I, I don't know how many people are familiar with these uh, pickles, so I will go through step by step. Um, just to uh, uh, talk about my little memory of uh, nukazuke. Uh, this is uh, in, in Japan mainly used use with rice bran. So uh, wheat bran nukazuke is a, a slightly um, well less than uh, common, uh, rather, rather a, a unusual one. But um, my uh, earliest memory of uh, nukazuke is uh, my grand, grandmother's uh, melon nukazuke. Uh, that was yellow melon nukazuke. Uh, that was uh, uh, kind of uh, really a uh, sort of sweet and salty, and I, I so enjoy every time she made it for us. And uh, that was, uh, I think it was about, uh, I was seven or eight years old. <laughs> so I, I was the one kind of uh, liked it, uh, uh, sorts of um, uh, traditional food. Um, and the, uh, my grandmother was a very keen uh, vegetable uh, girl, uh, vegetable gardener. And she, uh, I'm sure she made it lots of other pickles also, but uh, I only remember this uh, yellow melon nukazuke. Uh, I, I guess because I just loved it so much. So this, uh, I really clearly remember the feeling of, uh, I shouldn't be so greedy. It, it, even I like to have a bit more, it, it was so moish. And um, that, that's how I enjoy so much about melon nukazuke. And uh, yeah, I don't really know how many people had it uh, before, but uh, I'm, uh, uh, I've been working with this uh, wheat brand nukazuke uh, for the last two years. This is, this is actually my nuka. <laughs> It, it looks uh, just a brown muddy mix, mix things. And so I am going through, uh, talk through all that information and then how to work with, but um, most of the information I found and that I got to uh, talk about it today is um, mainly made uh, based on the rice bran nukazuke. It's because you may know uh, most of Japanese uh, people eat lots of lots of rice. So this is kind of byproduct uh, when you eat a uh, lot of white rice. This uh, nuka, which is uh, rice bran. Um, is um, used in uh, many ways in a kitchen, could be outside. Uh, so like uh, this is yeah traditional way of we using byproducts, uh, rice bran, but 
uh, we use for the fertilize uh, using put back into the soil. It could be using for uh, cooking in the kitchen. And uh, a lot of uh, other way, um, I guess uh, we have a technique to use this byproduct. And um, so most of the technique I follow is uh, rice bran nukazuke, but I found pretty much same. I can work with wheat bran nukazuke. This is, um, I think it is over two years uh, using with uh, wheat bran nukazuke. Um, living in, in the UK, um, I found it a little bit difficult to buy or find rice, br uh, rice bran. Um, I don't know where you are living at the moment, but most of uh, people who are living in, in Europe, like, uh, like me, may be easy to buy it wheat bran. So I thought this, this might be interest you to start with some pickle rife, <laughs> I would say. Okay, so I've got a little uh, file to share with you. So um, I just want to go through this, just the basic, uh, basic information about this Nukazuke pickle. Okay, so. So what is Nukazuke? Nukazuke is a fermented food processed um, food process in rice bran in, in Japan and the um, traditionally made, uh, traditionally used with vegetables, but um, there, is, uh, there is some traditional fish nukazuke in some local regions, but that's qu quite unique. Uh, so mainly we pickle uh, be mostly vegetable in this uh, wheat, uh, bran, bran mix. And last bran powder prepared and mix with salt and water. So make like a nuka, nuka doko is a, this mixture of bread, uh, mixing simply water and, water and salt. And also the, this is kind of um, everyday practice we need to give sorts of care and then this will create lots of uh, complex microorganism culture in, in, in the bed. And as much as you work and then keep maintenance, uh, there is a three major bacteria in East working in there, um, lactoacid bacteria, probably this is very common uh, Anyone who's keen to have a uh, fermentation, probably yogurt, sauerkraut, uh, all that um, made from lactoacid bacteria, and uh, batric acid bacteria, and another one, another one from yeast. I can show you later, but these three main bacteria in yeast are uh, main. Uh, bacteria in this uh, in this bed. Okay. I'm just trying to explain what tastes like if anyone has ever had it before, but this is quite so difficult. Um, just to, uh, I do my best. So <laughs> Uh, normally it's uh, described as like a tangy, salty, and has got lots of natural sweetness, like uh, my grandmother's uh, melon pickle. If you put some fruits or some uh, vegetable which has got sweetness, you get some sort of natural sweetness. And also umami and bitterness come from uh, come from this vegetable, also peels, uh, makes very complex flavor. This pickle is relatively uh, taking short period of time, 
uh, normally longest maybe takes 24 hours maximum. Um, depends how you like to have uh, fermentation goes further or light, but um, because of that, there is a still lot of freshness of your vegetable and fruits, what, uh, how, how long you are keeping in the fermentation ferment bed. But if you keep in longer process, you might get really sour or even like uh, um, it gets a little bit sparkling because of the um, fermentation goes like, uh, creates like alcohol and could be the, um, creates like a sparkling effect. And Nukazuke has a very unique, <laughs> I would say unique, <laughs> complex aromas. So sometimes describe yeasty uh, grain of rice. Uh, sometimes uh, my husband would often would describe smell like big socks. <laughs> so you can imagine the how um, this fermentation goes a little bit too far could be. Um, that's how you maintain. Uh, but. I don't want you to be scared, <laughs> and but uh, I just uh, making because of the lots of complex smell and flavor. Okay, preparation is quite simple: um, mixture of water and salt. But this uh, is the kind of uh, you need to maintain good level of moisture, and then uh, salt. Uh, salt level, always good to keep seven, uh, six to seven percent of total weight. So let's say if you have 500 gram of uh, bran and 500 gram of water, total of one kilo, you need to have a 60 to 70 gram of salt. And yeah, if uh, you're a keen uh, pickle person, um, yeah, you know, the level of salt uh, kind of uh, control the speed of fermentation. And um, this one is like a, a sourdough starter or sauerkraut. Yeast and bacteria need to introduce from your natural environment. So you need to give stay, good stare every day to give uh, some fresh air. Also, you need to kind of rotate the mixture bottom, bring up to top. Okay. So additional ingredients. This is kind of, um, uh, I, will, I will explain you like a brief idea of, how the ingredients work for Nukazuke. So like a controlling uh, fermentation speed, uh, maybe uh, you know about spices, red chili pepper, mustard seed, uh, sancho pepper and ginger will give sort of a uh, um, heat as well as they will uh, reduce the uh, that they, they will prevent the growth of unwanted bacteria also. So I always give uh, one or two piece of chili in, in the mix, but I don't want to have too much heat. So um, normally use minimum uh, mix of the uh, spices, but that will good to have in, in a mix also. And give some additional umami, as much as you uh, ferment, uh, use the uh, vegetable, vegetable will give great umami. Also, I often have a kelp, dried shiitake mushroom, those dry stuff will give good, good amount of umami. So that's, that's really a good way to adding umami in your mixing bed. And another one, extra fragrance. Uh, 
I often use some fruit peels and some lemon peel and yuzu peel. Those uh, kind of give, give the nice fragrance. Yeah, of course, the uh, fermentation process, it will create a lot of, lot of smell. But um, that, uh, those extra fragrance is a nice addition. So what kind of vegetable? Mm, this is uh, as much as you try experiment, uh, your way to find out. And I'm sure there is a lot of vegetable. You like it and some people not. Something like a uh, lot of uh, fragrance include like a, a garlic, onions. You may like it, but not for me. So those very strong uh, smells and um, kind of spicy um, taste in my leaves and then stay in a mixing bed long time. So if you want that, that's fine, but I don't want to have too much going on. So I will keep away those um, very strong smell and then um, taste. But uh, these vegetable, what I listed here, almost work so well. I often buy, uh, do the different mix, seasonal vegetables. And some of vegetable which you can cook and then put into the mix. Recently, I found like a lot of um, vegetable which I can buy in, in, in UK, like avocado, it was really delicious. So I start doing that. Some people do like a boiled egg. And if you do with uh, animal products, you need to separate uh, all the mixing bed because it might create a lot of uh, not healthy bacteria inside. So they always good to keep it just as a vegetable one or meat or fish separate. Okay. Can I ask you a question here? If you yeah. start, if you start with a vegetable, more yes. yin, like something mm. sweeter, or, and now we're adding salt to it. Mm. So let's take sweet potato. Does that mean it's going to have a more yang effect, less yin effect? Uh, I guess the, if um, I'm not totally sure about how in yin works, <laughs> I'm not professional much that side, but um, you can always uh, use different uh, different uh, different vegetables and mm. something like uh, um, having this uh, pickle has got quite a high amount of sodium, but when you have a lot of uh, mm, green vegetable which has got potassium might reduce your sodium taking so it, you might uh, able to balance it in that sense so something sweet potato can be uh, put uh, similar uh, other uh, vegetable which will de reduce the sweetness mm -hmm. what, uh, what, yeah. what what vegetable would uh, is the opposite to the sweet potato? Oh, then? like um, burdock, mm. something. Burdock. Like, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, burdock is really good. Good working uh, in here, but something which has a very strong flavor, which is uh, astringent, mm. uh, some sort of bitter, like uh, bamboo shoots. Uh, Gobo has very strong astringent as well. Something like that, you, you may uh, better cook fast and then you can pickle them in, in, the, in the bed. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this is just the basic following steps. It's the mixing bed every day 
check the level of the moisture. So moisture needs to have right amount. Otherwise, bacteria are not so happy. Not too much, not, uh, not too wet, not too dry. But as much as you start working, you will kind of understand. But it often getting a lot of moisture because as much as you use, a lot of fresh vegetable has got moisture and then those moisture will go onto the bed and then bed become really wet. In that case, you can use some kitchen towel or something to remove, reduce that moisture a little bit. And also I always, when I mix the bed, I always taste them. So I will kind of know the salt level. And this is the most important part. Smell, smell tells that their condition. <laughs> That's what I, I think. There is a many different kind of smell and then each smell, uh, this mix is telling me what they need or what, what, what they want. <laughs> so kind of particular smell creates particular, uh, particular bacteria creates particular smell. So that, that's kind of, you need to work through together with this uh, bed. <laughs> okay, so, but this is kind of uh, you living together. Uh, if you work in a couple of days, it doesn't really work immediately. So you always need to give it time. You might do work a couple of weeks and condition might change might change because of the um, temperature of ambient, might change because of the, uh, what you are adding it. So you, you need to kind of give it time, work it slowly, it just should give uh, living together. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Changes, changes might not, might not so immediate, but uh, you just, yeah, also learning takes my, my time to, to understand how things are. Okay, so I might show, show you my ingredients here. Can you see that? Okay. We see half the plate. Half the plate. Maybe we can. Oh, okay, that's fine. Can you see? Yes. Okay, so what I have is a wheat bran. I don't know what you can get uh, in your country, but in UK, wheat bran is something I can always buy from the health shop very easily. This is 300 gram of wheat bran. And in here, water and then salt. Because of the, uh, in here, 300 gram of wheat bran, 300 gram of water, and plus uh, 30 gram of salt which is quite difficult to dissolve. So in that case, you can always use boiled water to dissolve all that salt. I'm just mixing through. What kind of salt do you use? I like uh, sea salt mm. and I always buy the sea salt. I guess because I used to uh, have sea salt um, it's very common we can get in Japan. So I kind of like uh, flavor of the sea salt.
Okay, at the moment, mix is quite dry, but as much as you work through, you get a lot of moisture anyway. Okay, what you need is that's it. You just need to mix, mix through, and then you need to have a good uh, container which you can work easily. I have a very small container which is for one person. My husband work, uh, he eats sometimes, but not all the time. <laughs> so I always make minimum, but I eat kind of every day. So what I have at the moment is sweet. Rutabaga. Sweet. And this is bamboo shoots uh, I get from my garden. <laughs> also small, small cucumber. Celeries I like, and also carrot. And this is uh, red pepper. Red pepper is really nice natural sweetness. So, basically you just need to mix them every day. There is a different bacteria living in a different area. So on the bottom, a lot of uh, um, bacteria which smell really stink. Mm -hmm. And then lactoacid bacteria whole area in, inside the middle, but they, they need to have air to breed, air to work. And surface, you could be uh, have some sort of film bacteria, which which is I can maybe show you. Can you see that? It's really white and sort of uh, white powder. Anyone, if anyone makes some sort of a vinegar or uh, blue wines or beers, you might see the uh, white like film like a surface. If you have some sort of that um, white, um, powder, it almost powdery surface that called film, uh, film yeast, which is, which is good sign, but they will create sort of unwanted smell. So you need to put into the uh, mix. So you need to mix inside. Oh, okay. And here, what ingredients I have is uh, kelp and then dried shiitake mushroom. I always find it's good to uh, put into the mix. And then when we have, uh, when it has uh, lots of moisture, the, these will help to kind of absorb the extra moisture. And I will leave it uh, for a couple of days, like a mushroom. I leave it, leave them in inside a couple of days, and then eat eat them. But dry uh, kelp, just leave it for a while. And these dried fruits, fruit skin, I dried it a couple of days ago, and then uh, this will give sort of fragrance and sweetness. You can add fresh fruits peel, but if you're living in too long, it might become a little bit mushy and uh, you might find roasted inside the mix. 
So I always dry them and then put inside them. And because I'm not eating them, well, you, you can eat if you want, but um, I'm leave it as uh, for the fr uh, extra flavor. And I, I'm gonna remove, move out after a few days. And also ginger, you can kind of chop larger size and then leave a couple uh, week also. Vegetables, when you add vegetables, you always need to have uh, salt. So these washed vegetables, you need to have good amount of salt. To scratch the surface, this will kind of give, um, add the more uh, salt. Also these scratching surface, uh, surface when surface was scratched this um, scratch will help the bacteria and yeast go inside these vegetables so once your vegetable scratched just need to add it inside depends uh how long you're going to keep. If your vegetable is a small piece, it will be ready for uh, 12 hours or could be 24 hours. But if you are um, put using this larger size of vegetable, it may take longer. So always you can check uh, after you put into the bed um, certain hours. So once your vegetable went inside, always clean the outside bit. Okay. So oh, for the um, mixing every day, it may, uh, some people find a little bit too much work, but um, um, you can't leave in the fridge if you are going away or you can't really maintain every day. But because of the lacto-acid uh, bacteria, probably you know from yogurt or other, uh, other fermentation, 20 to 40 degree is the, their best temperature to work. So I often live in the fridge. This is a bit lazy one, but once a, at least once a week, you need to bring out, out of fridge and then need to leave it in the room temperature. So they will kind of back into active. Um, how do you know the uh, bacteria is active or not? Is uh, this could be the flavor when you eat it? It's it may not be sour enough or speed of fermentation. So uh, often you can check with the small pieces like a celery or a piece of uh, cabbage, cabbage leaf, 
and then you can always adjust it the how long would it take to finish the fermentation. Normally, maybe one leaf of cabbage, maybe seven to eight hours, could be up to 12 hours if it is in the winter time. But if, you're, uh, if that takes much longer, maybe you need to keep a little bit somewhere warmer place to build up a little bit more um, lacto, lacto, lacto acid bacteria. Okay. Is anyone like to ask uh, any questions? I have two questions. One yeah. is, do you, do you rinse the vegetable when you're ready to eat it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, these vegetables, you can eat it as it is, but uh, normally we wash off the, all this uh, bran. But I think these bran are really perfect source of the fiber. So I often eat them as it is, <laughs> but it's because of smell a little bit strong. So if you don't want to have too much smell, you can wash. And then you reuse the brand for years. Yes, uh, this, this mix, I think I, I had uh, more than two years. When, when we start uh, the lockdown, <laughs> COVID lockdown, I started with this and sourdoughs, and many fermentations. So yeah, this was uh, probably two years. But some family has like a 10 years old or keep, keep and maintain, same as like a sourdough starter. So some family keep very long period of their, their time. It's like a family history. <laughs> and so if you're eating them every day, are you making new fresh ones every day or every few days? Yeah. So you can uh, add, uh, so you keep maintaining this mix. And then um, if this brand is getting, uh, getting reduced, yeah, as much as you use, you need to add, you need to add new one. So when you add a new, uh, new brand, you need to mix with salt as well, mm -hmm. uh, with moisture. And it's always equal amount bran and salt water. The yeah. Water, the water and the bran are equal. So I will show you the, how different at the moment. This one, it's almost has got, can you see the juices kind of? Mm -hmm. There is a lot of juice. What I just mix is still very dry, very crumbly and dry. So as much as you use, it become a lot more wet. Of course. I think this is a bit too wet. So I need to mix these new ones into here. So you can always add a uh, new fresh uh, brown into the, your batch. Always you can add and then that, that will kind of help that moisture level. And also you will kind of keep the same level of volume. Okay, so and just to wonder, anyone has nukazuke? Anyone, anyone's doing any nukazuke at your home or no one? 
No, uh, we're, we have all the wheat bran we can mm -hmm. use here in Hungary. And oh, so, okay. so we're going to start immediately. The big difference is that uh, you, uh, you don't roast the wheat bran before you make your pickle. Uh, when you make the, the uh, rice bran at home in Japan, mm -hmm. Do you mm. roast it first? So, um, if we buy from supermarket, normally packets as a roasted already uh, to stop spoiling, also the uh, stop the um, uh, yeah. So um, for the uh, pesticides also. So, but. Um, if you can hold a fresh one, you can start with a fresh one. But fermentation goes really fast and then very active. So you just need to keep maintaining. Yeah, fresh one has uh, so much more enzyme and good fresh bacteria. So you might need to mix it twice a day, could be. But yeah, fresh one is, is a good one. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you do you take sea vegetable into your nuka, like kombu? I just leave it kombu all the time. But uh, yeah, normally kombu, kombu and chili. Also, a piece of ginger. Yes, I'll just leave it as it is in there. <laughs> do you do you soak the kombu before taking? No, the, no, no. no. Uh, these dried vegetable, uh, dry uh, ingredients. It's always good to use it as it as it is dry. Um, when when you soak it, it it become it, be, it become really mushy. One, mm. one time I used the uh, leftover from the cooking, but uh, it became everything uh, falling apart and then become mushy. That, will, that creates really smell and that was a good idea. <laughs> yes. uh, do, you, do you discard, the, when you start a fresh, uh, a very fresh uh, nuka? Do you discard the first vegetables for a while so that the, the brand gets tasty or immediately you use it? I normally eat them <laughs> 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 because it's just the vegetables. So I eat them, but often people use uh, scratch or uh, trimmings. Yeah. So people don't eat, eat from beginning of of the vegetable when you just start, but I just said, why not? Uh -huh. <laughs> but you can really, if you taste it, you can really tell that hasn't fermented. Yeah. Uh, so only the gobo you cook? Uh, no, a couple of things that I cook. Uh, I cook uh, like sweet potatoes, uh, also sweet corn, mm, something like that, a little bit too bitter when you eat it fresh, I'll, I'll, I do cook, but mm, not, not many others. Mostly I just use it as fresh. And when you have leafy greens, like um, mustard green, mm -hmm. yeah. you, you have a whole leaf? And then you just put it in, wash, dry, put it in. Mm. My pot is very small. <laughs> so I try to cut into the um, size which it, it can fit in here. Um, when you do the leafy vegetables, somewhere which hasn't got any uh, this brown touching to the vegetable, that become not fermented and then become uh, not, not fermented process. And that, that will create kind of uh, 
well, spoil. So I tried to uh, cut or match into this container. Also, if there is some le large leaf, which is flexible, I'm layer the uh, leaf, yeah. put that nuka in between. Oh, yeah. So the same all for, kind of, yeah, ferments evenly. Same for napa cabbage, napa? Napa cabbage, napa. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, you, you have it, uh, leaves, you take it apart? Mm -hmm. I do, yeah, actually. I think large pots, if you have a very large pot, which you, you can't fit into the uh, one Napa cabbage, and then, uh, and then you can put the some of uh, Nuka into the layers, probably no problem, but mine is a little bit too small to do that. So I normally uh, cut uh, and then put the one each layers. Do you make the uh, traditional um, big look look of the what what is it the 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 white the daika 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 yeah but in a in a big pot can you make it? Well, did you make it with <laughs> Wheat brand? Uh, I, I don't, um, I've never done it large, large, in large scale, but I do uh, fresh daikon, uh, daikon pickle. Mm. It's they're really delicious. Yeah. But if we try to make it like a one year, two years, uh -huh. Luca, can you use the brand? This you you can, brand? yeah, you can, but I just uh, eat it before it gets that long time. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> but if you're doing that, it's best to dry, uh, sun dry some vegetables because um, fresh vegetable has got so much moisture. Yeah. You need to have a weight, really heavy weight on the top of that because they create lots of moisture came out from the fresh vegetable. Yes. So you need to have a hang and then yes. make into the semi-dry vegetable to do yeah. that. Yeah. One big hanging, one mm -hmm. big hanging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. Oh, how nice. Thank you. That's very, Hi. very good. Ibrahim, <laughs> you're welcome. You did. Would you like to speak, Ibrahim? And you're muted. Can we use fruit? and berries or grapes or cherries or plums or apples? You can try and then I don't recommend very large fruits. Uh, I, I love toma doing tomato, but I always use small mini tomatoes. It's because they has got too much moisture releasing into the bed, but um, um, mini tomato, delicious, really great. So um, you can't try, could be the uh, half, uh, half pieces or um, the uh, grapes, uh, I think is no problem. Yeah, it would be nice. Actually, I, I, yeah, I'd like to try. But some of the berries which hasn't got uh, skin, like uh, raspberries and even blueberry might be, become a bit soggy because the uh, skin is, is not uh, thick enough, I would say. But you can do the um, maybe adjusting time timing, short period of time. Normally we do half day, at least I will give them to do the, if I put any vegetables uh, ready for the evening, but maybe you can check in the lunchtime, maybe, yeah, you can get so, sort of a nice effect and a nice flavor in a couple of hours. Well, thank you so much. It's, it's, it's such a pleasure. You make it sound so simple and so interesting and enticing. <laughs> I'm sure we're all gonna run home and I'm going to get ran and, and practice. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me.